This is a 700 pound graphics card. It's the Nvidia GTX 1080 Ti and it's the best consumer graphics card you can buy right now. And if you're building the ultimate 4K gaming rig, you're gonna want one of these. But I reckon for most of us, the idea of dropping 700 quid or 750 bucks on a new GPU is kind of insane. So what graphics card should you buy and how much do you really need to spend? Well, let's figure it out by the monitor resolution you use because not everyone needs a 1080 Ti. There's no point buying one of those if you're only gaming at full HD 1080p. It's massively overkill and a big waste of your money. So let's start with 1080p. It's still the most popular resolution to play at. If you're playing the latest games and you wanna put all the graphics settings to high, I'd recommend an NVIDIA GTX 1060 or AMD RX 570. At 1080p, there's really no point going for one of the models with more VRAM, as that's kind of only meant for higher resolutions. That's where that becomes important. So between the 1060 three gigabyte model and the RX 570 four gigabyte model, actually they're very similar in terms of performance. But if you're on a really tight budget and you play older or less demanding games, or you're looking for something basic for say eSport gaming at 1080p, I suggest either the AMD RX 560, which you can get for around hundred pounds, or for just a 10 or more, the GTX 1050. Now, a month ago, I would have suggested the more powerful 1050 Ti from Nvidia as the best all-round budget card for 1080p, but actually, AMD's refreshed 570, which is kind of like an overclocked version of the 470, I think comes out on top now. It's only about 20 or 30 pounds more than the 1050 Ti, but it is about 30% more powerful and in the same league as the 1060. So I reckon if you're gaming at 1080p, the best card you can go for right now is the AMD RX 570. Now let's move on to Quad HD 1440p. I personally think this is the sweet spot and it's ideal for 27 inch monitors, which is one of the most popular sizes for gamers. So if you are gaming at 1440p, you're gonna to need to pay a little bit more to get a better card that can maintain the high frame rate with ultra settings in games. Now, in my opinion, it comes down to either the Nvidia GTX 1070 versus the AMD RX 580. And we're looking at around 360 pounds and 250 pounds respectively. Now that is a big difference in price. So if you're on a budget, the 580 is your best option. Although if you want higher frame rate or if you want the ultra graphic settings in games and still getting that good frame rate, the 1070 is faster, around 20 to 25% on average. So really it comes down to your budget. So we've done 1080p, 1440p, and now we're on to 4K, or as I should probably say before I get shouted out in the comments, technically it's UHD, ultra high definition, but I'm talking about gaming at 3840 by 2160. Honestly, I think 4K gaming is still too expensive and too demanding for most of us. But if you have deep pockets and you want the ultimate PC gaming experience, while I'd still probably recommend going ultra wide for the ultimate sort of immersive experience, I'd love an ultra wide, I don't think I would ever go back to a 16 by nine, 4K is still the highest resolution you can get. Well, technically Dell's got an 8K monitor now, which MKBHD recently tried out, but good luck getting a decent frame rate on that in games. And also it's $5,000. So uh, maybe we'll stick with the 4K one for now. But in terms of graphics cards, I think you really only have two options right now. And they're both from the Nvidia camp, at least until AMD's Vega cards come out later in 2017, when hopefully we'll see some better competition. But really for 4K gaming, it's between the Nvidia GTX 1080 and the 1080 Ti like I have here. Although if you are on a tight budget and you have your heart set on a 4K monitor, I guess the best option is probably the AMD RX 580. Uh, in terms of bang for buck. But for proper 4K gaming, the 1080 and the 1080 Ti are the best choices. They're both incredibly fast cards and really the best on the market in terms of performance. But of course, as you'd expect, they aren't cheap. A big thanks to MSI who kindly provided me with a 1080, which I've got running uh, in the PC behind me right now, and also the 1080 Ti. Now the big question is, is it worth paying more for the Ti? And in my opinion, unless you can get a really good deal on the 1080, the answer is yes. The 1080 Ti is the only card that can consistently, across the board, give you at least 60 frames per second in the latest games with high or ultra settings at 4K. Across a range of games, I found that the 1080 Ti was around 22% faster than the 1080 at 4K. That's the difference between getting, say, 48 FPS and 60 FPS in a game, which for enthusiast gamers is quite a big deal. Of course, you could always lower your graphic settings a bit and you don't really need anti-aliasing as much at 4K, but chances are, if you're building a 4K gaming rig and we're talking about these sort of graphics cards and this sort of money, that's not something you're gonna really wanna do. But it's also worth considering if you have a monitor with G-Sync or FreeSync, those adaptive sync technologies that reduce screen tearing and smooth out your average frame rate, 
only work with Nvidia and AMD cards respectively. So for example, if you have a G-Sync monitor, your best bet is going for an Nvidia card so you can take advantage of that. If you have a high refresh rate monitor, which are very popular with gamers, basically anything above 60 Hertz, and you want to take full advantage of that, then you're gonna need a faster graphics card that's gonna give you that higher FPS. For example, there's no point buying a 240 Hertz refresh rate monitor if your graphics card and your computer can only get you 60 frames per second in game. That's where it's useful to go for a higher tier card than you may otherwise buy for that resolution. Now you might be thinking, well, what about buying say a second hand or a cheaper last generation graphics card like the GTX 970 or 980? Well, obviously if you can get a great price on those cards, that maybe makes sense, but as well as being faster, the newer gen cards tend to be cooler, quieter, more power efficient, and also they have the latest ports like HDMI 2.0B, which supports HDR, and DisplayPort 1.4, which makes them far more future-proof. And a quick word about laptops, because these new Pascal cards, the 10 series of graphics cards from Nvidia, they have pretty much desktop performance in laptops, which is amazing. It's always been the case that laptop cards were far less powerful because of battery life and cooling issues. So on the whole, I would recommend going for the latest generation Nvidia or AMD cards where possible, rather than opting for older, cheaper ones, if you can. So we've covered most of the stuff so far, but there are of course a few other things to consider like overclocking, temperature, noise, power draw, and the question of what brand of graphics card you should buy. Well, there's many variants of graphics cards with slightly different clock speeds and cooling solutions, which also affect overclocking potential. Honestly though, you can't really go too far wrong. They're usually within a few percent of each other in terms of performance. And as for what brand you go for, well, it really comes down to the price, what fans they use, or which one offers the best warranty. Now I'm gonna cheat a bit here and delegate the specific answers to most of these, like whether you should go for the MSI 1080 Ti versus the Asus 1080 Ti or that sort of thing, to the internet because there are so many reviews out there covering all the variants and that you can compare before you buy. And I will link to a couple of my favorite sites that do this in the description. But there's a couple of other simple stuff that you should think about before you buy. And that's things like, is your power supply up to it? Does it have a high enough wattage? You also need to make sure you have sufficient space and cooling for the card in your PC case. And also make sure you have the latest drivers from Nvidia and AMD to get the best performance when you get the card. And the final thing to remember is your PC is only as fast as its slowest component. So make sure your processor, the RAM, the motherboard are modern enough and fast enough not to bottleneck your shiny new graphics card. That will go a long way to make sure you get the best performance possible. Somehow we've got through a whole graphics card buying guide video without mentioning teraflops, gigabits, bit buses, or nanometer architectures. And while that stuff is good to know, for most of us, it kind of just comes down to relative performance and value for money. How much more powerful is this one than this one? And is it worth paying more for? At the end of the day, that's kind of all we need to know. So hopefully you found this video useful and you can find links to all of my recommended graphics cards for the different resolutions in the description below. And also let me know what graphics card you're using right now in your PC in the comments. Give me a thumbs up and click that subscribe button if you like the video and you wanna see more of these. Thank you very much for watching guys. and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.